Okay, let me get this thing here together here. Get this together. Uh, hold on. I am trying. Hold on, let me move everything out of the way. I'm trying to, hopefully you guys can see me, <clears throat> because I'm trying to do the YouTube, and I'm trying to do the Facebook, so I have, I'm on YouTube, let me get all my cameras together, I'm on YouTube, Facebook, and Periscope, okay. Got a lot of cameras going here, people. So I'm trying to make sure that all my cameras are correct and all my cameras can see me. Okay. So <clears throat> what I have here is I'm going to be making some... <clears throat> I'm going to be... I have... First of all, let me make sure my phone is turned up. Both. Hold on. Uh. Hold on. Okay, that one is turned up. Make sure my YouTube is turned up. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm trying to make sure I'm in both cameras. And I'm make sure I'm in my iPad camera for the Periscope. Okay. So, I have over... I, uh, YouTube camera is not correct. Okay. Okay. I have over probably 500 different natural antibiotic regimens, but I'm going to show you guys one today. Let me turn my light on. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. Now, first, what you're going to need, y'all, can y'all hear me? Okay. First, what you're going to need, you're going to need turmeric, turmeric root. You need real herbs. You need real, um, you need real stuff. Okay. You need real raw formed herbs. You cannot go and get this stuff from Amazon. You cannot go and purchase this from the grocery stores. You need to purchase all of your herbs if you're going to be trying to um, <clears throat> take care of your own bodies, you need to either order them from me or you need to order them from another reputable master herbalist, okay? Stop trying to do everything cheap because things are not going to work out good for you in that manner, okay? So you need real turmeric root. You need, um, I made my own oil of oregano, if you guys can see that. Um, no, I'm sorry. This is my black seed oil that I made. And this is my oil of oregano that I made. Okay, so it's very simple. You would need... <clears throat> This is something that you guys can do at home quick when you are sick, okay? Um, this is just for home, okay? So you can do probably a teaspoon of, this is turmeric root, okay? And then you want to do, um, this is a teaspoon of black seed, okay? And this... It's the oil of oregano. This is the oil of oregano, which we're not going to use a lot of this. Let me get, uh, hold on. Okay. Want to smell it, make sure there's nothing else on it. Okay. The oil of oregano. You're going to need certain tools. So the oil of oregano, I would say do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 
26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So you want to do about 30 drops of oil of oregano. You want to stir it. Now this here, this is for adult dose. Okay? Adults. Don't give this to your babies. This is for adult dose. Um... If it's a little bit too loose, more turmeric. Uh, now, let me tell you something else this is good for. This is also good for Staphylococcus and MRSA when it's on the outside of the skin. Also, you can use this internally. So, I would suggest when you make this antibiotic up that I just showed you, when you make this antibiotic up, I would suggest... Let me put a little bit more oil of oregano in there. Uh, well, I mean black seed oil. When you mix this up, I would suggest whatever you're trying to fight, whether it's um, whatever type of pathogen it is, you always have to fight it internally and externally okay so let's just say if you have MRSA or if you have staph infection you want to take one fourth a teaspoon of this two times a day and you also want to use it on top of the staph infection okay you have th this MRSA and staph that is a path a pathogen that is a very strong aggressive pathogen okay it's a very aggressive pathogen so this pathogen can be killed but it's going to take work and i have noticed it on um uh like treating a child well can't say treat i put it like this my grandbaby had fallen almost a year and a half ago she had fallen and when she fell, see, we all have staff on the top of our skin, okay? So she had fallen. And when she fell, um, she got a, um, it was a staph infection, but it was not MRSA. It was a staph infection. So I had, I already had, I already knew that she had a staph infection, but I told her mom, take it to the doctor just to be for sure. So that I'll know what I'm dealing with. So my daughter took her to the doctor and she had a staph infection on her leg. Let me tell you something about a staph infection when you get it any place on the body. It travels. It travels through the nerve. So let's just say if you get a staph infection um, here. It's going to travel like this. It's going to go. It's going to go. It's going to go. It may even wrap itself back around. It may go through your hand. It may come back up to the neck and into the scalp because certain nerves are together. You follow what I'm saying? Certain nerves are together. So this pathogen is very, very aggressive. So you have to fight it internally. And I mean, you got to fight it. You have to fight it internally. And then you have to fight it externally by using this mixture that I just showed you. You have to use it on the outside. And I mean, you got to use it four, five, six times a day. But on the inside, internally, you must you must do this one fourth of a teaspoon, three, maybe four times a day. Because this pathogen is a very angry pathogen, okay? This is a very, very angry pathogen. Um, you have to use, let me see if I can turn this around uh, so you guys can see this. Uh, hold on. Okay, hope you guys can see this. Let me make sure YouTube can see this. Can YouTube see this? Okay. Okay. Up here, can you guys see this? Okay, up here you have herbs come herbs come in forms of categories. You have the raw form, the tea form, and the tincture form. 
in the oil form. So when you're trying to fight a when you're trying to fight a pathogen like um when you're trying to fight a pathogen as far as um I'm trying to get this right. Facebook. When you're trying to fight a pathogen and it is staph or MRSA, you must fight it in all forms of herbs. So you, you have to fight it with raw form, which this is raw form right here. This is the raw form that I mixed up. You have to fight it with tincture. Tincture is the drops that I put in here, the 30 drops, okay? You also have to fight it with oils. The oil that I used was oil of oregano, okay? But I make all of my own everything, okay? I make I make my own black seed oil. Let me get over here. So I make my own black seed oil. I make my own um, oil of oregano, my own black seed oil. Any oils that I need, I make for stress, for things like that. And I'm going to be coming to you guys on YouTube showing you how to do all of this. I'm not going to be doing too much teaching here on Facebook. <clears throat> you must subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to continue. I'm only if you want to continue to get the teachings. I'm only doing this here on Facebook because I'm just trying to let everybody know that we're on YouTube teaching. So as I just told you, you have to fight this germ, this pathogen, and MRSA can kill you. Trust me, it can kill you. And MRSA can also cause certain parts of your body parts to fall off. Your ear can fall off. Uh, your fingers can fall off because MRSA is a pathogen eater. And um, it eats from the inside to the outside, but... Here's the thing. Um, first is staff. After staff, it turns to MRSA. What you what you're trying to what you're trying for it what you're trying to prevent you're trying to prevent it from becoming um, MRSA because MRSA is when they quarantine you off in the hospital, they quarantine you off in the rooms and things like that. But the reason why it becomes MRSA is from the antibiotics because once again. Some of our doctors feel that um, MRSA and, and any type of um, infection, viral infection, ear infection, whatever kind of infection you have, they feel that antibiotics can cure it all. And that's, that's not true. Because as you can see, when you do get a viral infection or a uh, uh, any type of infection, antibiotics just put it to sleep okay just like chemotherapy puts cancer to sleep it puts it in remission so most of most of the time when you're getting antibiotics the antibiotic is putting whatever illness that you have or ailment that you have in remission we'll look at it at that at, like that but this mixture that i just mixed up trust and believe this antibiotic right here that i just mixed up I don't care what you have. I don't care what it is. I don't care how bad it is. But the problem that we have sometimes, we are impatient. And we don't understand that it takes time for herbs, raw form, raw, R-A-W, raw form herbs to work. Um, will they work? Yes. Um, should you be patient? Most definitely. Um is it possible? Always. But most of us don't most of us don't have the patience. We don't have the time. You know, we just we want instant gratification. Well, the human body um works how you treat it. Okay? So let me just say this. If you treat the human body good, if you're good to your body, and you're giving your body all sorts of live 
um, foods and live herbs and seeds and uh, you're eating clean and you're not eating meat. When you do take something like this, if you should need it, the body is going to magnetize itself to raw form herbs, to oils, to aromatherapy, because that's all it knows. But when you have been a unclean eater most of your life or all your lives, and then you try to do something like this great, this great antibiotic here, um, most of the time it's like you're, you're fighting. You understand what I'm saying? You're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting. Uh, it will take you much longer to become rejuvenated than it will if you were a vegan or a clean eater. I wouldn't even say if you were a vegetarian because being a vegetarian, that's, that's just the stepping stone into becoming a vegan. Veg being a vegetarian, you're still a meat eater because most vegetarians say, well, I don't eat meat, but they're still eating cheese, still eating bread. Bread is made from pork. Cheese comes from a cow. So we have to understand and we have to understand that even if you are a vegetarian, you still can become very, very ill because you're still a meat eater. Vegetarians are still meat eaters. You're still consuming parts of the animal for your protein. Um, one more thing I want to add to, to this... Um, to this antibiotic. You can also add raw Manuka honey. Now Manuka honey, the real good Manuka honey will probably cost you about $49.99. It will cost you about $49.99. This is the reason, this is the reason why I started making antibiotics and I started making things like that because a lot of times people cannot afford to spend $200 just on the ingredients to rejuvenate themselves. So this is why I started doing the antibiotics. I started doing all sorts of natural remedies and, and um, things that can help you with different ailments, arthritis, uh, lymphatic system, di diabetes, heart attacks, strokes. Uh, this is why I started doing it so that uh, you don't have to worry about getting the ingredients. I was doing it for, for my customers, but now I want to show you guys how to do it um, so that you will know, you know, it, it, it may be, and, and also this antibody, this antibody can be used for scalp abrasions. It could be used for um, sores. It could be used for boils. This is very good for boils. Uh, it can be used for... Uh, fungus on a foot, on a toe. Um, it can be used for planter's warts. It can be used for tons of things. Um, you can put it in your uh, water in the morning, stir it up and, and drink it and go about your day. Um, it's quite a few things that you can do with that natural antibiotic that I've just given you the ingredients for and I just made right here in front of you. But once again, I would suggest also adding a everything that I just mentioned and also adding Manuka honey to it as well. Um, on our website, we may start just selling all ingredients so that you guys can make it yourselves. And uh, I think that this would be great because, you you know, everyone needs to know how to make this. It's not good for me just to do it for you. This is why I'm doing the teaching classes on YouTube so that you guys can do it yourself. You know, you can get in the kitchen, you know, get your ingredients. You can order your ingredients from me or however you want to do it and just make what you want to make. You watch the videos and then go on the website and order your ingredients. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, it will alleviate a lot of um, time and pressure off of me because I'm doing a lot of teaching now. And that's my, that's my focus and that's my goal. I'm much better as a teacher to me um, than I am... Um, a herbalist. I'm a very, well, you have to be a good herbalist in order to be a great teacher. 
but I'm more comfortable at teaching. Uh, we have uh, a few new products on our website and also what we have on our website, we have incorporated a lot of our product into one. So some of our products are now three in one. Uh, some of our products are two in one. Um, and all of our products are handmade by, by me, by myself, right here in my office. Um, you won't get any fancy labels with me uh, because I would like to, I want it to appear and look like, but still be professional looking and the product works, but I want it to look like it actually came from these hands working on it. I don't want my product to look like it's straight off the store shelf and this and that, because as we all know, those things never work. Okay. You can buy, um, a face cream from Walmart. You can buy a face cream from any store. You can buy a face cream from, um, what's the other store? Um, Uh, what is that? Uh, home goods. I think home goods sell face products. You can buy body scrubs from different places, but do they really work? And we have to be careful also what we're putting on our body. Let me tell you something. This here, your skin, that's the biggest organ on your body. So have you guys ever noticed how you can put on lotions you can put on oils. You can put on all different, excuse me, I got to spit this gum out. You can put on all different types of oils and baby lotions or whatever you want to put on. And within an hour or before, your body looks like you haven't put on anything. That's because this is the biggest organ on your skin and this organ has absorbed it all. So this is why I... I was making the body scrubs and the lotions and the oils and the deodorants and things like that because we, we, we want to use something on this big organ from head to toe. We want to use something on this biggest, the biggest organ on our body. We want to use something that is, that will absorb inside the body, but still be non-toxic because most of the things that we put on our bodies is toxic. You know, um, I use nothing on my body but olive oil, uh, almond oil, uh, coconut oil, because it my body absorbs it immediately. Your body does as well. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful what we put on our bodies. You don't want to put something on your body that's going to be cancerous in the next five or ten years. You don't want to use certain soaps out here that your body absorbs and five or six years from now you have cancer. You don't want to, you know, we have soaps out here that actually causes us to have diabetes. We have soaps out here that actually causes us to, us to have arthritis and cancer and uterine cancer because most women, not most women, I'll say some women feel that they have to wash their vaginas with soap. Let me tell you something. If you have to wash your vagina with soap, then that means your 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 um, pH balance is off, and the only thing, only reason why your vagina is smelling is because of the meat that you're eating. So it's all the parasites and all the pus and all the worms that's coming from the body out the vagina, and it gives you a smell. It gives you a bad discharge. The vagina should not have a discharge. The vagina should not smell. Now, the vagina should have a, a scent. I wouldn't even say an odor. The vagina should have a scent of a vagina. The vagina should never have the scent of where you have to run out the room from yourself. Okay? We have to, we have to understand those things. So, this is why I, like I said, I just made this antibiotic for you guys. Uh, so, each week... Well, I don't know. It may be each week. It may be uh, a couple of times a day. It may be whatever. I'm just going to be strictly on YouTube um, teaching. Um, but that's we have to understand some things about our body. This, this big organ, we have to understand, uh, as I just told you about MRSA and staph, and uh, we have to understand them things. And we definitely have to understand that vagina part, okay? 
uh, like I said, I'll say that again. If you have to use soap on your vagina, then you have a bad diet. If your vagina has an odor, you have a bad diet. Your vagina should only... Um, it should have a scent. I'll say it again. It should have a scent. It should not have an odor where when you take your panties down that you're running from yourself. Okay? You should not have a discharge. I know we've all been taught that discharge is natural. Well, most of the time, the people who taught us that a discharge is natural is coming from an unnatural human being. Okay, discharge is not natural. A lot of times we as women, we have been taught also that it's okay to cramp. Cramping is normal. You should not be cramping when you get your period. If you're cramping, you have a bad toxic diet. You should not bleed heavy. If you're bleeding heavy, you have a bad toxic diet. Uh, you could have fibroids. If you have fibroids, you have a bad toxic diet. Uh, it's just the meat that's inside your body and the meat is killing the vagina walls okay um one thing i love about being a vegan what i love about being a vegan is that i do not have major illnesses i ache uh i pain a little bit sometimes uh most of the time it comes from my yoga uh and sometimes it comes from stress um which i've gotten that down at about 85% now. <clears throat> um, but we just have to, we, we, we have to be more in tune with our bodies and we cannot sit up and want to order everything off of line. We can't sit up wanting to, oh, let me go on Amazon. Let me get this. Let me get that. You should know how to make your own everything. You should know how to make your own antibiotics as I just gave you the ingredients and I showed you how to do it. That's just one. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more of uh, antibiotic recipes. Um, hundreds more, trust me. Um, you should know how to make your own pain creams. You should know how to make your own inflammation busters. You should know how to make your own immune system uh, oils. You should know how to make everything. You know, I mean, it, it to me, to me, um, it should suck that every time you want something, you have to go buy it. You have to wait on people to ship it. You have to, like me, for instance, I make all my own product. I let things soak. Uh, let me show you this. <clears throat> this here is black seed oil. And I just put it in this, uh, I put it in this olive oil bottle, but this is black seed oil that's set in the sun, um, well, I had a half a gallon, but I put it in here when I, you know, so that I can use it. But this, this black seed oil set and curved in the sun for, um, probably mm, about 61 days. Yeah. It's set and curved in the sun that long. Um, can you guys hold on? Let me go get my charger. Hold on YouTube. Let me get my charger. Uh, my phone keeps doing this. Hold on. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But um, let me fix this back. Can you guys still see me on YouTube? Okay. Okay, better. Okay, so um, when I make oil of oregano or I make um, black seed oil or any of my uh, immune system, when I make the hemp seed oil, uh, anything that I do, it sits for at least two months. Uh, I try to keep at least half a gallons 
of certain things so that when people order, I can just do this. You know, I could just get them ready. This here is the black seed oil and this is the hemp seed oil. Uh, this is um, hemp seed oil with black seed oil to knock your boots off. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, everything that I do, I make. Every single thing, every single thing. Let me show you this. I'm going to show you how people really think of their health. Let me show you this. Let me show you this one basket that has to go out. Uh, hold on. So, can you guys see this? You see this order? This is for one person. And she does this quite often. She orders at least, like this, she orders at least... Every five weeks, just like this. And I'm not even finished with this order, okay? This is one person. This is one person's order. This this lady is going to be a walking robot. She's very serious about her health. Very, very serious. And I really love her for that. I mean, she's very, very serious about her health. She plays no games. She's not the only one. I have several, several hundreds of customers who are serious you know, I see people on Facebook and, hold on, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I see people on Facebook, I see people on Instagram and I, you know, and they tell me and they inbox me and they call me and we have consultations and they tell me how sick they are. They tell me, oh, I'm in and out of the hospital, oh, this, oh, that, and then I see them at a barbecue. With the biggest piece of swine on their plate, eating bacon and butter and biscuits, and you know, I, I I I often wonder, and when I see things like that, I say to myself, you know what, self, food is a worse addiction than any street drug. Food is the root of all evil because people take food and they 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 um. They don't eat to live. People take food and they're living to eat. And this is why we're, we're, we're dying as we're living. You know, I say this all the time. Yeah, we all got to go. Okay. That ain't no secret. And it's, it's, it's not a big deal. We all got to go. But do you have to die dead? You all know that's my motto. You don't have to die dead. It's up here when I teach. Don't die dead, die alive. That's my motto. Don't die dead, die alive. Why why is it why is it the norm now to be hooked up to machines? Why is it the norm to be thrown in a damn nursing home? Why is it the norm to be sick and thrown up? A lot of us feel like we're not we're, 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 we're that that we are not okay if we're not terminally ill. A lot of us don't feel good if we're not terminally ill. A lot of us think that um, it's, it's something wrong if we're not ill once a month, if we're not in the emergency room once a month, if we're not in not the doctor's offices. A lot of us think something's wrong with us if that's not happening to us. That is not the norm. What's normal is raw form herbs, aromatherapy, Watching what you eat, watching how you think, watching what you say, watch who you be around, watch what barbecues you go to, watch what food you eat. When I tell you this thing is serious, this is serious. I am so in tune with what I eat, how people are cooking my food, uh, what are you putting on it, where have your hands been, who you've been around, and who you've been around, who they have been around. I am very, very in tune to every single thing. Every single thing. I don't eat from everyone. I don't eat out of everybody's houses. I don't eat out of all restaurants. In order to live a long life, even if it's a short life, whatever it may be, it's already planned out for us. If it's a long life, if it's a short life, why do we feel that we have to live it walking around dead because we have been taught 
and we have been accustomed, we, we have been taught and we are accustomed to living dead. We don't feel good if we're not going in and out the doctor's offices because it's the norm. The doctors have taught us that we have to relearn all over again. We have to understand. We have to first stop being so cheap. We have to stop being so cheap. We have to take classes. We have to buy herbs. We have to buy it from a person that you feel that you're safe with because some herbs are sprayed with pesticides. We have to put money to the side to place orders. I have done everything in my power to put people on a layaway plan. I've given classes. I'm giving free classes. I'm charging for some classes. I'm on YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, Instagram. I have done it all. So I feel that some people who I see that's still sick from when I first started this thing on Facebook some years ago, and they're still sick, it's because you are Europeanized. You really, really are not okay with being well, you know, subconsciously, seriously, you're not. Because it's normal for you to go back and forth to the hospital. It's normal for you to get vaccinated. It's normal for your kids to be sick. It's normal for your grandma to be sick. It's normal. It's all normal because we have been taught that way. We've also been taught that you got to die from something. You know, we've been taught that way. We've been taught and, and, and it's been embedded into our brains that we have to die from something. I've said this a hundred times as well. You don't have to die from nothing but simply that you go to bed tonight and your heart stop beating. They do the autopsy and they can't find anything. But people tend to believe and we have been taught and conditioned to think that it is not normal to die healthy. It is not normal to be on this earth and be 79 and 89 years old and still driving ourselves to the grocery store. Still going out stepping on a Friday and Saturday night. We feel that it's not normal to be almost 90 and not on any medication. And I know a woman who's like this. We feel that it's not normal for to, to, to not be a diabetic and not have a heart attack or a stroke or ever have cancer found in our body when we're almost 90 and can live alone. It's not normal. You know, we've been taught that. We've been taught that these things is not normal. But what we have been taught is that it's normal to be sick in bed and thrown in a damn nursing home. It's normal to uh, eat swine and to eat birds. It's normal not to exercise. It's normal um, to um, uh, feel sick all the time. We, we've been conditioned that way. That's how we've been taught. But when you get a person like me and I'm trying to reteach you, I'm trying for you to relearn things over. Some people get offended with me. Some people feel like who she thinks she is, you know, but I'm here to tell you that from experience, the people I used to work in a funeral, I used to be a, a funeral director. I used to embalm bodies. So I have seen some things that you all won't even can't even understand unless in you were a funeral director. I have seen the how the parasites have ate up a brain. I have seen how on the inside of the body it is rotten. I can I used to be able to cut open a the stitches out of the head and out of the Y shape when people come into the funeral home and they have had a, um, um, they have come from the morgue and they have had an autopsy. And when we cut them open, I can look at their intestines when I held them in my hands. I can look at the brains when I held them in my hands. I have actually held hundreds hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of intestines in my hands. I have held plenty of brains in my hands because as a funeral director, when they come in from the morgue, we have to unstitch the brain, pull the skin back, pull the skull back, and we have to put the brain back in the skull properly, okay? We have to do embalming. 
we have to do a lot of things on the inside of the body. It's not an easy job. And that's why it costs so much. So I've seen people dead and I've seen people alive. And this is why I can tell you what really goes on in the body. I've seen it. And it's not a pretty sight. I've seen the brain of a person who's gotten perm after perm after perm, relaxer after relaxer after relaxer. I've seen that. Um, I've seen a person with um, cancer of their liver. I've seen cirrhosis of the liver. I've seen a person with AIDS. Um, you know, uh, dead and alive. But the most horrific thing is to see them dead. And I've all, when I used to be an embalmer, I used to always think to myself, this could have been avoided. This could have been avoided if this person had just ate correctly. Not saying the death itself, but what the person died of did not have to happen. And the reason why I know that we don't have to die from things is because our creator left exactly what we were supposed to be taking on a daily basis. And that's these herbs. Herbs. This is what our creator left for us to take. Herbs. But we tend to not want to do that until the doctor tell us that all the medical resources have been exhausted. You don't want to hear that. I'm I'm telling you when they, when they tell when you when a doctor tell you that everything that he has done has been exhausted, all medical terminology has been exhausted, that means you are about to die. That means that they are done with you. They are finished with you, done, out of here, go home. Hospice, that's all they know. Um, so I just want to pop in tonight and tell you guys a little bit of that. Uh... Also, let me show you this. I'm going to show... Oh, I don't have any more. Uh, uh, well, I'll show you this. This used to be a... Well, it's some in there. But this is a clay. This is a clay. And this clay is good for brushing teeth. It's good for uh, absorbing toxins out of the breast. When it comes to um, lumpy breasts tumors in the breast. It's good to, uh, it's good for underarm detox. It's good for a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, that that's what I do. That's what I do. I, I, uh, sit up all day and all night and I try to think of things that's going to help us, um, as a whole, as a race, as women. And, um, whatever you don't hear me mention, it does not mean that I can't do it, and it does not mean that I don't have it. I can do anything, and I have whatever people need. It's just that people get into this um, way of life where if it comes to herbs, if it comes to spending a couple of hundred dollars on herbs, or going out partying or buying a wig or hair weave or getting their hair braided or getting their nails or their toes done, they will always choose the fun stuff. They wouldn't they're not gonna choose herbs over hair, nails, makeup, partying, drinking. They're not gonna do that. But it saddens me when people come to me when it's hardly nothing else I can do. And you know, when I see people like that, I say to myself. Because, you know, listen, I have people talking to me in my head, okay? So these people over here be telling me, why didn't he, why didn't she come to you three years ago when you first started talking to he or she about this illness? The little people on this side of my head be telling me, because she was cheap, because he was cheap and he wanted to party. And they wanted to go out for the 4th of July and buy outfits. They wanted to have these big barbecues at their house to show off in front of their families and things. And probably because they were afraid. They were afraid to live a different life. Maybe afraid what family is going to say. You know, if you're used to throwing big parties on the 4th of July or something like that. And this year you say, well, I'm not doing it because I'm spending all my money on trying to 
rejuvenate my body. So we're not having no barbecue. Plus, I don't eat like that no more. A lot of people feel that they're going to get uh, bashed by the family. But here's the thing. Do we want to continue to get casket sharp from head to toe? Or do we want to rejuvenate ourselves and tell our families and friends to hell with you? I need to spend my extra money on all these ribs that I'm buying, that I'm going to be eating and sucking down my esophagus and sucking down my throat and feeding y'all the same garbage. We ain't having no barbecue this year because that $400 or $300 that I was going to spend on all these ribs that we ain't supposed to be eating anyway, or at least yourself, I'm going to buy me some herbs. I am going to start healing my body. I am going to start um, eating to live. I'm not going to be sitting out here with y'all on the 4th of July uh, eating all this stuff and getting sick. And then when you get sick, they're not coming to see you in the hospital. What the hell? They don't care. Goodbye. See you later. They're going to say, oh, Jane Doe, girl, she in the hospital. Then the next couple of months, they're like, girl, you know she passed away. Then they're going to come to your funeral to look down over in the casket at you and Girl, she sure looked like herself. Girl, she was a mess. Girl, did you see her family? Girl, I know her husband going, he, I seen that lady looking at him. This is what people do for you. So this is what I'm saying. You, we, we, we have to live for us. We have to do what's best for us. Don't nobody care about you more than you care about yourself. You know, so we have to stop being afraid of what people going to think if I turn vegan? What people going to think if I start off being a vegetarian and then want to go vegan? Girl, they used to me cooking on Christmas. Girl, they used to me cooking on uh, the holidays. Girl, they used to that. I got to cook for my kids. I got to cook for my family. Do you want to live? It's just as simple. Do you want to live for do Do you want to live for yourself or do you want to die for your family and friends? It's just as simple as that. And a lot of times, this is what's the problem. The problem is that we are living for other folks. We're afraid of what they're going to say. Let me tell you something. If you're the type of person, you've been a meat eater all your life. You've been a toxic food eater. You've been eating a lot of bad carbs. You've been doing all the bad things that's, that's making your illness even worse. If you're that person... Trust and believe if you try to go a whole nother route, if you start eating to live, you're going to get ridiculed by the family. You're going to get talked about. You're going to be looked down on. You're going to have people to question you about how you want to live. But let me tell you something. All while they questioning you, you're constantly getting better. Your pH level in your vagina is coming up. Your 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 alkaline level is coming up to a, 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 a pH level, a good pH alkaline pH level. You're starting to get off medication after medication after medication. Is it going to take time? Yes, because you have damaged your body so much. So it's going to take time. But in the process of it taking time, you can't give up. But in the, in the process of you doing all these things, you're going to have family study digging in, digging in you. So you can't eat that, right? Mm. You Girl, we all ate that when we was little. Don't you remember? Oh, you better than us now. You're going to get all of that. You're going to get co-workers when they bring this nasty, stinking food to the, uh, what's that they be having at the jobs? Uh, uh, when everybody bring food, the buffet thing or whatever. I don't, I don't know what you call it. Um, I forgot what you call it, but when everybody bring food and you don't eat it and you said, I'm cool. I just, just give me water. Or just give me a, a apple or orange. You're going to get talked about. So a lot of times these things make us say, you know what? That's okay. Girl, give me a give me a give me a plate of them hog mogs. Give me some of them chitlins. But then later on in the wee hours of the night, you down. You got bubble guts. Your stomach hurting. You about to pass out. Your blood pressure went up. All these things because you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, and the Joneses damn near dead. So. I'm just here to tell you tonight, let's not try to keep up with the Joneses because the Joneses is damn near dead. You have to live for yourself and do what's best for you. Even when you have grown children, if your children can't understand that you ain't cooking all that garbage that you usually cook on the 4th of July, listen, tell them to go on down to Smokey Joe's someplace and get them a slab of ribs, but don't bring it in your house. You have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. 
We have to understand that. You cannot just continue, especially women, we're getting older, okay? You cannot continuously just um, continue to abuse your body. We're only sick and, and, and down and out and stressed out because of our own fault. It's our fault. Nobody's making us eat all these cookies and potato chips and hog mogs and uh, greens with fat back in them and uh, McDonald's and Burger King. and, and uh, uh, Do I have to go on? Nobody is making us do these things. We're doing it because we want to either fit in or we are addicted to certain foods. And I'll say this again, and then I'm going to say goodnight. Food is more of an addiction than any street drug out here. You can get a person on heroin and cocaine, can let that go and be done with that quicker than a person can let go of Oreo cookie. Okay? So I'm going to say peace and blessings now, and I hope to see you guys tomorrow.